in this video, we are going to try to find a way to find a formula for the derivative instead of always having to estimate it. So I have a function f of x here, and my goal is to find the slope of this function at x equals a. So this is x equals a. So remember, the slope of this function is defined to be the slope of this tangent line. So I've got my tangent line drawn in here, and f prime of a is the slope of this pink line. So far, when we're trying to find the slope of the tangent line, what we have done is we have found the slope of what's called a secant line. So this green line is a secant line. And we have found the slope of that line, and then if we make the distance between these two points, between a and a plus h, be really small, then this slope of the secant line is a good approximate for the slope of that tangent line. But again, what we want to do is be able to find the slope of the actual function and find a formula for it so we aren't having to estimate it all the time. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take these two points, um, this point here and this point here, and let's find the coordinates of them. So this point, the x-coordinate is a, and the y-coordinate is our value of our function at a. This point here, the x-coordinate is a plus h, and the y-coordinate is f of a plus h. So if we want to find the slope of this tangent line, we can find the slope of that secant line and then make that value of h really small. Okay, so let's find the slope of that secant line. So remember, we've got two points. One of them is a f at a, and the other is a plus h f at a plus h. So the slope of that secant line equals, we're going to take the change in our y's, so we're going to have f at a plus h minus f at a over the change in our x's. So I have a plus h minus a. So this ends up being f of a plus h minus f of a, and then these a's cancel out and we just have h in the denominator. Okay, so now we've got the slope of our secant line. So what we're going to do is we are going to let h get really small. Then the slope of that secant line is going to approach the slope of the tangent line. Another way to say that is as h gets really close to 0, f of a plus h minus f of a over h gets really close to the slope of the tangent at a, which is f prime at a. So this gives us a formal definition of our derivative. So the definition of the derivative is f prime at a equals, we have a new little notation here, the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f at a all over h. Okay, so that is the definition. Now remember, the goal was to figure out how to find a formula for the slope of the tangent line. Okay, so our definition
of the derivative f prime at a is f prime at a equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. So this here, this part, this limit as h approaches 0, this is a new notation. And um, we're going to just kind of um, use the idea and not get real heavy into the, um, the specifics about limits. Again, here we have the definition of our derivative. And calculating or coming up with the actual derivative is kind of a process. And if you try to do it all at once, then sometimes it's it's easy to get lost or to lose signs so I s break this up into four steps so step one what we're gonna do is find f of x plus h so that's that part that's step one step two we're finding f of x plus h minus f of x. So that's basically finding that entire numerator. Step three, well with step three we're just taking that numerator and dividing by h. So then we're finding the whole thing that's inside of that limit. And then finally in step four we actually calculate the derivative by letting that value of h go to zero. So let's look at a specific example. So in this example, our function is f of x equals x squared minus 4x. And what we're doing is we're using the, the definition of the derivative to find f prime of x. So remember, step one is to find that f of x plus h. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in x plus h wherever we see an x in our original formula. So it's going to look like x plus h squared minus 4 times x plus h. And if we distribute and make sure that you, um, you foil this, this first term out, we get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared, distribute the minus 4, minus 4x, minus 4h. Okay, step two. We're going to take what we found in step one, the f of x plus h, and we're going to subtract off f of x. So what I have is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 4x minus 4h minus x squared minus 4x. So this is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 4x minus 4h. Distribute the negative minus x squared plus 4x. And if you do this process correctly, almost always, especially with, um, well, always with polynomials, whatever was in your f of x is going to cancel. Always something's going to cancel. So the x squared terms cancel and the 4x term cancels. So we end up with 2xh plus h squared minus 4h. Okay, step three. All we need to do is take the answer from step two, 2xh plus h squared minus 4h, and divide it by h. So I'm going to divide each term by h, so I get 2x plus h minus 4. Oops, went off the screen there. So I took the 2x plus h plus, or 2xh plus h squared minus 4h, the answer from part 2, and divided by h, and got 2x plus h minus 4. Now, our final step is to look at what's going to happen when h goes to 0. So our derivative is the limit as h approaches 0 of 2x plus h minus 4. Okay, so if we look at this term by term, as h tends towards 0, nothing happens to this 2x. So I'm going to have 
the 2x just stays the same. As h tends towards 0, this h term tends to 0. So that's going to go to 0. So I'd have a plus 0. Here. I'm not going to write it, though. And then minus 4. So our derivative is 2x minus 4.